Amazon has opened up its sidewalk platform to outside developers, which could have long-term effects on 5G rollouts and other Internet of Things technologies. We're going to discuss those impacts next up on Today in Tech. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Joining me in studio is our old friend of the show, Jack Gold. He's the president and principal a- uh, analyst of J. Gold Associates. Hello, Jack. Keith, good to be here. Welcome back. I, you know, I say old friend. I'm not saying that you're old. I'm just saying, like, you know, we've been friends for a while. So. It's okay. Uh, right. You can say I'm old. <laughs> um, so you had uh, some analysis recently uh, on your in your Technology Insights newsletter uh, talking about sort of the Amazon sidewalk opening itself up to uh, external developers. Can you just, for, for people that might not understand what Amazon sidewalk is, because I had to sort of go in back and research it, just explain what, what sidewalk is. Sure. So, and, and that's a great place to start, yeah. right? Because people don't really know it. It's it's not a it's not really public, right? Even though you may have one, uh, <laughs> um, they snuck it in under the, under the table. So, what what sidewalk is is a uh, basically a network that's installed in many Amazon devices or newer Amazon right. devices like Echo. Uh, like the cameras, right? The ring cameras. Yep. Um, and what it is is it's a chip that uh, talks um, Bluetooth, blue, blow, low energy Bluetooth. Yep. Okay. For battery savings, right? It also talks LoRa, which is a, a WAN, low speed uh, WAN technology that's been around for quite a while. Yep. It hasn't really branched out a lot, but it's it's around. And they'll, they'll also do like FSK 900 megahertz, which is stuff that's been around probably for 20 years. Yeah. So what happens is, is if you buy an Echo, or at least a newer generation Echo, it comes, these chips come inside. You know, the Echo connects up to your Wi-Fi connection or direct to an Ethernet connection, however you do it. And that's how they get out to the internet. The um, the Bluetooth, then whatever connects up to that Bluetooth or, or lower connection, then will go out over your internet. So okay. it comes... Uh, turned on by default. Now, as a user, as the owner, you can turn it off if you want, but most people probably don't even know it's there. Right. And so what happens is, is as devices go by, uh, it doesn't have to be real close, but, you know, Bluetooth is, what, 30 meters or so, goes by your um, your Echo, let's say. It can talk to the Echo and send out data over your Echo to Amazon right. or anywhere else on the internet. And so what Sidewalk basically is doing, what it, what what um, Amazon wants to do with Sidewalk is say, hey, look, we have this huge network. There's, I don't know what the number is, millions of Echo devices out there, lots of Ring devices out there. They claim 90% of the U.S. population coverage. I don't know. but Yeah, that, that number seems a little awfully high. But n- now I'm thinking, is this is this beneficial more for kind of urban areas and, and yes. things where you have more coverage? Because, you know, again, the neighborhood that I live in, you know, there's six houses. Right. And, and, you know, in theory, if all six houses had it, so you could have complete coverage. If one has it, yeah. then you got to be sort of near that house. And so that's the issue, right? It, it, this is a, a high density network in certain places. Okay. In other places, you know, if you're in a rural area, you know, with your six houses, yeah. you're not going to get connectivity. But what's nice about the technology in theory is that there are a lot of applications where I don't need real time connectivity. And, and, um, and in fact, by the way, the, Downside of Sidewalk is if you need real time connectivity, it doesn't work for you. Right. Long. Okay. So you can't like stream a movie that that needs, uh, or more importantly, yeah. well, you can't anyway because it's a very low data yeah, rate yeah, yeah. technology. Right? Yeah. But um, I'm thinking, you know, emergency fire alarm, or if you've got a wrist bracelet on and you're having a heart attack and you need to get to somebody now. Okay. And you're, and you're not in, in range. You know, if you were walking, you'd get to range eventually. So <laughs> half an hour later, doesn't do you much good because you're lying on the sidewalk dead, right? <laughs> right. And that's that's the fundamental issue with sidewalk is it's not, which is okay for a lot of things. I mean, if it's if it's a meter. If you're, you know, doing water meter reading, I, you know, if I if I transmit it once a month, you know, a couple of kilobytes worth of data, does it matter if I do it now or an hour from now? Probably not. Right. So, so who does Amazon think is the sort of the beneficiary of this from from because from a homeowner's perspective, if I've got this system, it feels like Amazon's just borrowing my bandwidth from these devices or from my broadband ether. Uh, Geez, my FiOS connection. Right. So my fiber optic line or my DSL or whatever my, my, you know, connection is borrowing that for other people. Yeah, and I don't definitely. like, and, and I don't like that. Like I, you know, and of course, no, I, as soon as I read all this, I checked and my ring camera is old. So I, it doesn't, it, have it, it doesn't have it. And I haven't checked my echo yet, but I'm pretty sure my echo is old as well. So it's, you know, I haven't upgraded in a while. So I'm probably not 
opted in on any of these anyway. Um, so it's, it's opt in by default. It's opt in by default and you have to opt out of it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. So from a homeowner perspective, it was like, well, I'm not getting anything in return unless I go out and maybe buy some of these uh, other devices. And from, from the website that, that Amazon has, the, the, their basic big selling point was if you have a pet and it gets lost, right. then, all right. So now let's say my dog gets out of the house and I've got a little pet tracker on the, right. on, on the dog. The dog can go and the dog is now down the street. That in theory, that could then access that sidewalk network and tell me where the dog is, right? In theory, so in theory. Now, but the problem is, it, it well, it it may tell you with the dog. It's not as big a deal. It'll tell you with, within some area, of, yeah, right. It's not. It's not it's GPS. Not, it's not GPS, but okay. So it'll say it's at your neighbor's house, and you'll know where your neighbor is, perhaps, or something right. like that, along those lines. If you really need deterministic GPS type of location, it's not going to do that for you. It, right. It, it'll be a wide area but it but you're right you're basically offering free service to whoever wanders by your house right and how many people are really going to want to do that ultimately especially since it's only low energy and it's not it's not high bandwidth not high bandwidth so what what is this why they've opened it up to external developers because yes. they want to find they want to they don't have any ideas <laughs> they need they need other people to maybe think of some ideas for them on how to use this well it's not just them i mean you know there, there are already ideas air tags for instance it's that kind of, of technology right it's the same air tag air tags don't use sidewalk today they use bluetooth and, and connectivity okay. across the board to other things but but it's that basic kind of of technology that they're opening up what amazon the play for amazon here is twofold number one is they have something called iot core which is their infrastructure of how you build IoT applications. And, uh -huh. and these, you know, these smart devices are basically IoT devices. And the second piece is, if you're successful and in your, I don't know, you know, Keith's dog tracking service and you've got a million subscribers, that's got to be on a cloud somewhere and okay. they want it to be on AWS. Yeah, okay. And you're, you're not charging for the connectivity, but you are charging for the app. Right. So I'm still paying you, you know, whatever, five bucks a month. I don't know what the number would be. Yeah. And part of that's going to Amazon. So... If you've got, if you could get, uh, you know, a hundred million devices, um, and, and, you know, a thousand apps, you, now you're talking some real money. It, it, it still feels like though that they, they need a better use case for sort of convincing people to either buy these devices. I mean, I guess the, you know, the, the watch example that you, you, or the, or at least the example of the health device so that if you're walking right. around, maybe you'll be saved because this watch that's detecting that I'm having a heart attack does connect to a sidewalk network or let's uh, let's look at a real case uh, but, but wouldn't most of those be using GPS anyway or some of these these other networks or the network on your phone like my yes. 5g on this phone yes. is is faster than than a sidewalk thing. absolutely and, yeah. it, and if it's personal on you uh, it's probably going to link to your phone it makes much more sense but but let's look at a, a real use case so there's a real problem today in, in many places where Amazon drops off a package and you never get it because somebody comes up and picks it up off your porch, right, right? Porch pirate, right. Right. What if you could build a low enough cost tracker? And it'd have to be real low cost, but but let's assume, you know, you could build a dollar tracker um, that could talk to the sidewalk network. I drop, uh, I'm so an Amazon. You're an Amazon guy, okay. Yeah, so I'm an Amazon, Amazon driver, yep. I dropped a package on your porch. You know it's there, right? I mean, he sends you an email anyway, but you know it's there. But what if somebody picks it up? Right. You can, in theory, track to where it ends up, right? And 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 catch those folks. So so you've eliminated a uh, a path for them to get away with it, right? in essence. Okay. But it would have to be really low cost, or or, or groceries, right? Um, I I ordered groceries from local stock stop and shop here, right? Yeah. And and they're going to deliver them. I don't know when it's going to get there. Uh, if there's a little tracker on the side of the package as they're driving down the street, I can see where they are. Um, I can then know when it gets dropped on my porch. I know what's in it, I, you know, or there's a temperature monitor and there's a, you know, something frozen inside and I want to make sure that it doesn't defrost. Those are the kinds of applications, you know, tracker, tracker kinds of applications yeah, make yeah. a whole lot of sense. Wasn't RFID supposed to sort of do all that too? And, or it just hasn't been deployed enough or it's too expensive? Well, the problem yeah. with RFID is you need a reader. Okay. And, and, and so I don't have a reader. And, yeah. and, and with RFID, you have to be within close proximity, like okay. you know, inches. Okay. Right? Um, so it, it, it is deployed. It's very cheap. Yeah. But because there are, are no readers, it's not going to be able to, to send me messages down the street. And certainly Amazon, with all of the package deliveries it does, has a vested interest in maybe trying to access the network that way. 
Yes, but okay. but again, it's they have a network in place. They want to fill it. I think yeah. from from Amazon's perspective, that's what I take away. Okay, from the consumer perspective. It, it, there are some advantages because it really lowers the cost. So for instance, if you have a tracker that, and you're not carrying your phone and it has a 5G, a 5G chip in it, you've got to have a subscription to 5G. Yeah. So there's a cost involved. Okay. It, it may not be huge, especially as 5G goes to things like network slicings where the, instead of giving you the full bandwidth, they give you a, you know, a small chunk of the bandwidth and can yeah. charge you a lot less. But even there, the problem is with 5G is that, um, it, it, the modem, the, the, the RF radio unit and mm-hmm. whatever the tracker is takes a pretty significant amount of power and battery life is doo doo. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, in a in a watch, it's a day maybe. Where these guys, um, you know, with low power Bluetooth, you could you could have a year's worth of of data, especially because there's very little bandwidth going out anyway. Right. Um, and and that's another advantage of this kind of technology. Okay. Now, in your your analysis that you wrote about about sort of Amazon opening this up to Sidewalk, or Amazon opening up Sidewalk to outside developers, y- it does have an effect on on sort of five G and some of this network slicing. Can you expand on that? Like, sure. You know what what were five G carriers hoping to accomplish with network slicing? So what they wanted to do was and maybe it, explain network slicing a yes, little bit too. Sure. So all right. So let's start with network slicing. Yeah. So let's say I've got um, a five G signal coming into my home or or work or wherever yeah. it is. Right. It has very wide bandwidth. I mean, it can have in, in some cases a gigabyte worth of bandwidth, and the and the um, the carriers, if if I want all that bandwidth, the carriers are going to charge me, you know, whatever the monthly charge is going right, to be, or, right. or 50, maybe there's a day charge. fifty bucks a month or a hundred bucks a month or whatever, or, or, yeah, or more. Right? Yeah. Now, if I've got, let's use my water meter example. If I got a water meter, it's sending maybe a kilobyte worth of data once a month. Yeah. I'm not going to charge. I, I'm not going to pay fifty bucks a month for a five G modem on that thing. It ain't going to happen because because if I'm the water authority, uh, there goes my profit. Yeah. And 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 I as a user am not going to reimburse them $50 a month for their signal. So what the the uh, newer generations of 5G technology allow is to slice up the network and say take uh, I'll use a, a, an easier example. Let's say it's 100 megabyte worth of, of data. Yeah. What if it, instead of 100 I give you 100 megabytes worth of data, I give 100 people 1 megabyte worth of data? bandwidth okay and then charge them accordingly right so if i divide that fifty dollars by a hundred what's that fifty cents fifty cents yeah that's that's the model that they want to go after and it's a great model for iot and it works really well because 5g infrastructure not yet but will be everywhere and so i don't everywhere's relative term most everywhere and i can have a tracker or i can have a temperature monitor on a on a train refrigerated car or whatever i want to have it and it'll just connect up for 5g whenever i need it to yep yep there are also consumer devices that can do the same thing again the health monitor what if you don't have your phone or you don't want to have your phone on with you or you're running down the street or whatever there's a whole bunch of stuff that we could think about that that, that would be along those lines um on 5g the nice thing about 5g is you got connectivity pretty much everywhere with with the amazon stuff you got connectivity when you're near somebody's home with the device right. installed the good news is it's free you're not paying that fifty dollar fifty cents or hundred yeah. a dollar a month yeah yeah um for most users it's probably not a big deal but there are business models where that's just prohibitive right right and there, and and so that's where we're going with this it's it's so, not that so 5g have, goes away yeah. it's that it's a new business model that's right. cheaper right okay and so it's potentially beneficial for people that don't want to pay that 5G. Right. And again, like is network slicing, is that the big appeal of 5G anyway? Or is it still the, the high bandwidth the, in the edge scenarios and, you know, those types of... It's all of the above. This, yeah. this is a, a feature, a nice feature that yeah. you can use, but it's not the primary feature. It, it's, it's what's going to enable a lot more IoT types of devices, smart devices, because... It's low bandwidth, low cost. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of IoT devices. So, you know, a, a traffic signal. Uh, you want to, you maybe want to be able to change the, the, uh, how long the red light stays on versus green light versus by, by traffic or whatever. Right. And you want to send it a signal. It's, it's not a lot of data, but you're not going to spend $50 a month to do that. Yeah. And so it's those kinds of models that, that the slicing really was all about. It also yeah. works really well in a private setting. So if I've got 5G installed in a factory floor, you know, I can slice it up into in, into segments right. and, and and send it to different places. You know, the slicing thing. This is this is a little off topic, but the networking slicing concept it always confuses me a little bit because you you know you, you picture like a pizza pie or, right. or some big circle and you're slicing it up and then and then handing out 
But then it always feels like, like I always get confused that with beam forming, which is sort of directing your signal to right. a specific thing. So when you talk about like, oh, I've got a water sensor, I'm thinking, well, they're going to just point that and give that little bit of bandwidth, but they're not. I mean, it's still a, a wide signal. You're only getting that, that, that right. small amount of bandwidth. And they're basically taking a signal and saying, okay, you know, if, if I'll use an example, if, if the signal is, 10 seconds long, you get one second of that 10 yeah. seconds. Okay. And then, and then they go on to the next person. So it's, it's, it's segmenting the signal so you get a part of it. Yeah. Whereas the beam forming is, I got a flashlight and I'm pointing it at your, at your face. Right. And if you go that way, then it doesn't right. help me Then you don't see the light. Yeah. Right. So how has the 5G rollout been like the past couple of years? I mean, we've been talking about this 5G stuff for a while. And um, I, you know, I, I equate it since, since most of the, the cool parts of the technology have no real impact on an average consumer. Like this is really aimed at factories, industrial settings, and sort of that edge AI, uh, autonomous vehicles, robots. Like that's a that seems to be what five G is appealing because again, four G LTE for the average cell phone user was was good enough, and so the extra bandwidth doesn't matter, and, and because it's also a smaller uh, cell, right? So you have to build more. Uh, well, so sort it, of, it like, depends. Or, see, you're looking at me like, okay, well, I'm, I'm just not realizing the no. benefits of 5G. No, so, so there, <laughs> you, you, no, you're taking it from, from a personal perspective okay. as opposed to All Verizon, right. AT&T, T-Mo. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. That, for that, them, that, well, so there, there's a few different things. No, there, there are real advantages, but let me start with the carrier side, right? The advantage of the carrier side is that they have a lot more capacity with 5G than they had with 4G. Okay. And and that means that they can handle a lot more signals, a lot more technology, a lot more phones, but also a lot of other stuff. Cars are coming and, yeah. you know, the traffic lights, whatever it's going to be. And that's important because uh, quality um, of, uh, you know, you pick up your phone, no one calls people anymore probably, but if you send a text or you want to stream video, you want it now and you want it in good quality. So capacity is a big deal, especially, in, you know, if you walk down in... in in Boston yeah. or in New York or Chicago or LA or wherever, uh, capacity is a real problem, constraints. So that's one piece of it. The second piece of it is that, uh, it also, and by the way, let me back up a little bit. 5G as it's been rolled out to date for most places, not everywhere was built on top of the 4G infrastructure. Right. So what that means is that you're you're basically hobbled by what 4G gives you and then you put this, you know, nice wrapper around it 5G. We're now getting to the point where most of the the carriers are rolling out standalone 5G which is true 5G core networks, you know, the core of the network is, is based on 5G stuff, not 4G stuff. Yeah. That's what brings on slicing and all the other kinds of technologies that we're talking about. And aren't there three bands within sort of the 5G? The, yes. There's low band, mid band, and, and, and high band? And high band is called something else too, right? Yeah. So the, the, the question becomes... It's, and low, low band would give you the, the, the wide coverage area. And that's what one of the vendors is doing. But then other vendors are doing that mid band stuff. And then the super high edge AI, you know, you need all of this, this computational power at the factory is, is the upper frequency or the high band, right? So, so the problem is frequency, what's available for frequencies, right? And, yep. and, and the, in, in, in this country, the FCC determines that. Yeah. And it, they determine, determine that by territory. It's not even across the country for general purpose stuff. So they've repurposed a lot of the low band uh, technology, which, which we had, we've had for years yeah. to now be uh, available for 5g. Then there's a mid tier C band that they, they, um, they use, uh, they actually captured some, some um, frequency spectrum from satellite communications. And, and that doesn't, so the, low, the lower the, the, the frequency, the better the range. Right. Right. The better, not only the range, but the penetration so it can get into this building as yep. opposed to C-band, not so much. And then you go to the really high millimeter wave stuff. That's what it was, millimeter, millimeter wave. wave yep. Which has tons of capacity because you have lots and lots and lots and lots of spectrum. So yeah. you can send out a lot of signal, but it doesn't penetrate buildings. It may not penetrate metal. So it's for short haul, but high freak, uh, high data rates kind of stuff. Right. And, and it also, for high density. So it'll, it'll work in Manhattan. It won't work out here in, you know, Needham perhaps because the buildings are too far apart. Yeah. Yeah. But, but then also if you then connect, if, you know, you connect an edge computer right near that signal, then you can start doing all the processing on the edge computer and you don't have to go over to the cloud to do a lot of this AI stuff that. And that's going to happen out. anyway. We're already seeing yeah. some of that happen. So, yeah. So the, the ultimately what's going to, this will be out a few years, right? But ultimately, what's going to happen is you'll see 
cell towers that have cell equipment, tip, traditional radio equipment. Yep. But as they move to more and more, you know, common off the shelf kinds of equipment, they'll also have computers in there that'll actually run applications locally on the cell tower. That's your edge. Right. And so you will get instant availability. And then the, the cell towers are all connected or should all be connected up by, you know, high speed fiber to, to, to the core network somewhere. Right? right. Right. And so the local processing will take place at the cell site or near the cell site. Right. And not have to go off to the cloud to be processed and then all sent back. Right. It, it, it gives you a lot more processing power locally, but also does things like alleviate the need to actually send all that data to the cloud. Right. And that saves money for the big, uh, you know, especially a lot of the AI stuff has so much data that has to get sent. Right. Yeah. And, and if, if I'm processing tens of thousands of things at the cloud, as opposed to having tens of thousands of edge computers processing one or two things at a time. Yeah. You know, it, the, 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 the time, uh, from when I send the data to what I get a response back is, you know, a hundredth of, of, of what it would be otherwise. All right. So, so my, my experience that I was talking about with sort of the, uh, you know, the, I'm the average user and I, I hear marketing about 5G in terms of speeds and feeds and I don't care about that. Would, would a better message be this capacity? Like, okay, you're, you're, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a busy area, you're no longer going to get, I don't want to say busy signals because again, you don't probably use it as your phone, but, um, you know, lag or, yeah. you know, how come you, you're not seeing sort of messaging around that? Is it just easier for the, the PR marketing people go, oh, speeds, feeds, ah, fast, fast, fast. Because no, they tried it for a while and it didn't work. They tried the capacity thing yeah. for a while. Yeah. Oh, okay. They 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 did. Uh, there were there was a lot of talk early on for consumers about capacity because of that. There'd be less right. lag and all that kind of stuff. And consumers said, eh, okay, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, like just as a, as a you know, every day when I drive in here, you know, there, I've got the radio on and there's this there's this Comcast ad that annoys the heck out of me. Only one. Well, it's well, <laughs> luckily I, I have Verizon FiOS and so their ads are not as annoying, but. So they've got, it's, it's for their home internet. And this, this ad is, is like, it's for 10 G and it's like, you yes. don't need 10 G in your house. You don't need it. You don't need it. But like everyone, they, this, this marketing is like, Oh, well you've got multiple devices connecting. It's like, it can handle it. Like the existing broadband can handle most of the stuff, but they're trying to like, and I feel like they're trying to trick consumers who don't care. You know, we might not understand they it. Yeah. They don't know. Maybe they've got some, some, some bandwidth issues within their house, but you know, the lag, the lag is not going to be, it's not, it, I don't know. It's just, it's just, how, how many streams of 4k video are going to have coming into your home? Is, yeah. Is even, the bottom line. I mean, I've got three kids and I've, and they're all watching different things at every time, but I've got the lowest connection broadband ever. And no one's ever complained to me. I know. I, I, I the same issue. Yeah. The, the, actually the commercial that bothers me the, the, even more is the one where they go against the Timo, uh, fixed wireless access stuff yeah, on yeah. the couch, the, 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 the <laughs> yeah. psychiatrist on the couch. Yeah. So, or, or, you know, the people are walking, the women are walking by the house and they, and they want them to turn off their phones. It, it's, it's, it's so silly. All right. But right. we won't get, we won't get any commercials. Well, again, because we understand the technology yeah. and maybe, maybe, you know, the, the average well, but, viewer doesn't. But that's and, the issue, right? So yeah. it, it, Keith, if you really look at the commercials, you know, the geared, I, I hate to say this, but they're geared towards five-year-olds, right? I mean, <laughs> the message really isn't about, you know, getting into any depth. It's, it's sound bites. Right. It's what can I put in front of you that's, aha, that's, that's what I want to buy. Right. Right, right. All right, so let's uh, switch gears into my sort of my last sort of kind of co common questions things with is the internet of things still a big deal? And it sounds like it is. It sounds like IoT, I mean that was the, you know, ev that was the acronym that everybody was using. It was like IoT, IoT. There's going to be 25 billion devices connected to the internet and um is, is that still gaining momentum or has it slowed down in recent no, you know, it's, months and years, it's still... It's gaining a lot. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's, to most people, it's kind of invisible. Uh, but, but let's take an example. We were talking earlier, uh, before we, we came on live, about digital twins, Yep. right? Digital twins, uh, let me explain digital twins. Digital twins is basically take a physical something, whatever that is. It's, it's this building. It's the human body we were talking about earlier, yep. right? It's a factory setting. And building a, a exact model digitally mm -hmm. of that environment. And that's your digital twin. Now, if I put enough sensors into the physical, right, I can be continuously gathering data about the physical that I can then feed into my digital twin. Right. And then I can use that digital twin to predict what's going to happen. You know, is a machine going to go down? Um, is there going to be a traffic accident if it's out on, on, on the highway? Right. Um, is it, um, you know, in the human body, am I going to have God forbid, have a heart attack or something, right? Right. Uh, or, you know, you're diabetic and my blood sugar is going. And, and, and that digital twin is going, is becoming a really, really big issue, especially when you tie it to AI 
AI kinds of environments. So IoT is is real. It's growing dramatically. It's people aren't making such a big deal of it anymore because um, you know, it's, it's just kind of invisible. It, how does it affect you? You know, what's right. IOT to you? Right. But what if, here's another example that we see all, all, all over the place now, um, food production and farming. People are putting sensors into fields so they know when to water specific areas. Yep. Wh- when to put, uh, insecticide or wherever they're going to put fertilizer down in, in, for different plants. And they do it on a, on a, not, not over their, you know, thousand acres. They do it on a, 100 square feet basis and then they run it into essentially a digital twin AI kinds of te- technology that says oh that corn stalk over there in the corner is having problems go take care of it right right you you increase your yield dramatically you lower your costs because now you know you're using less water you're using less fertilizer um, you have great impact on the environment because again you're, you're there's less stuff draining off and so that's really kind of where IOT is morphed into it's really more about smart sensors and and digital twins and the ability to predict what's going to happen to prevent you know whatever you're trying to prevent yeah do they do, are there any obstacles on the hardware side where you know either is it is it more about battery life and making sure that you have a long enough power yes. you know, that like you know maybe initial deployments the batteries were running out and then it became useless or they had to plug them in yeah um or speeds of the chips i mean those are still probably pretty good right yeah it's and, not or is it are they still expensive not expensive all of yeah. the above. So, okay. in fact, getting back to the sidewalk, the sidewalk, sidewalk discussion, yeah. that's really what it was about. It was uh, having a cheaper chip. Because if I take a 5G modem and put it into a, a chip, right. it needs a lot of power. 5G is just, it just takes a lot of power as opposed to Bluetooth. I mean, Bluetooth headphones, what, how long do they last? 20, 30, 40 hours, right? right. And they're, they're right. on continuously. In a sensor that's sending data once an hour, that's going to last years. As opposed to having it a 5G modem where there's a lot of interaction going on. The networks are just very, very different. And so power is a huge issue. The longevity of the battery is a huge issue. Cost is also a huge issue. I'm not going to deploy $10,000 $10, chips. Yeah. I'm going to deploy $10,000, $1,000 chips. It, right, right. So, so anything I can do to lower cost, um, get more battery life, by the way, it makes it smaller. Okay. Cheaper to build. Yeah. And I can charge you less because it's not costing me a lot of money. Yeah. All of that is going it enhances the ability for this to, to, to blossom. So and s- one, sorry, for, but it's one real quickie. Yeah. This also ties directly into the edge because what I want is the computing to take place at the edge for privacy concerns, for one thing. Yep. And also, I want instant, um, uh, I was going to say instant gratification. That's not quite right. But, but, you know, instant return of the data so I know what to, so I can act quickly. Right. So it all it all gets tied together. Yeah. Well, like if, another example of the edge of of why edge is beneficial too is if you had a so say we're in a building here and we've got a bunch of video cameras and we're you know monitoring for any intruders and things like that instead of sending that live stream right. over the cloud it's more like you just process the change right. or and then send that alert right. so that it's you're not you're not spending all that money into the feed and then having someone looking looking at That's it that right. way. So so I walk into yeah. the I walk into your camera and the camera says, okay, here's this guy that walked in. I'm going to send it to the cloud. The cloud's going to look me up. And they, and, and after they looked at, you know, 4,000 different people, they're going to say, aha, that's Jack. Then they're going to send data back and say, do you want to let Jack in? Now, this is what, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds later. In the meantime, I've broken in, right? right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that, but that's the issue, right? It's, it's, a, it's a time thing. Right. Uh, whereas if you're processing locally, locally and you, you know it's Jack, you can let me in with, or not let me in in a half a second. And if I'm a bad guy, you know, you just send out a signal to the cops and they're here in no time, hopefully. All right. So getting back to the sort of the sidewalk discussion, I yep. mean, do you think this, we're just going to sort of go full circle here. Uh, is this something that, that maybe technology enthusiasts should just be aware of, or was it just, Hey, this was just a piece of news and, and like, does this, does it have legs, so to speak in terms of things to, to, to monitor? So for, from a personal perspective, no. Okay. Other than maybe you want to turn it off if you've got an Echo device. Maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't want people right. bar. It is right. such little, it's not even a lot of bandwidth. It's not. It's, it's, not. it's more about the principle, right? right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm, I'm subsidizing you, basically. <laughs> yeah. And not just you, but everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah. Give me, give me a discount on my delivery and I'll right. do it. Right. But, but the real issue is that this does open up a different channel for, um, people, companies who want to build, especially consumer oriented, low cost things. 
and it gives them a way to get the data out of those low cost things without spending a lot of money right. and not affecting the battery life as we talked about earlier. That's really kind of what, what this is about. From a consumer, you, you and I consumer perspective, knowing about it is fine, but yeah. it's not going to make any difference. All right. If All right. the average person who goes into a, let's say a Best Buy or a Walmart or a Target and buys a smart device isn't going to know what technology it's, it's sending the data across and isn't going to care. They're right. going to care about the price and how well it works. Right, right. All right. Jack, always good to see you. St- still, Thanks, still enthusiastic about technology. Right? Nah. <laughs> no, no, you turned into a pessimist. No, no, no I'm I, kidding. I, I, I am, I am joking. Well, I, I, I am worried that uh, you know, with all the political stuff going on in the world, that uh, we we could be in for some trouble in the technology space. But that's a whole different. All discussion. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not get into that. All that stuff. Let's just let's try to say. I'm not talking now. about local. I'm talking about you know geopolitical stuff. All right, all right. Uh, uh, yeah. no, we won't go there. All right, good to see you, Jack. Thank you, Keith. All right, that's all, that's all the time we've got for today's show. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, add some comments below. Join us every week for new episodes of Today in Tech. I'm Keith Shaw. Thanks for watching.